Uh, good afternoon. My name is Bruno Binader, and I work for Mapbox from Aspo, Finland. And today we're going to talk about the next generation automotive navigation uh, solution from Mapbox using uh, the Mapbox GL native engine for the QT location. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm, I will try to be fast here because we have a little time and there are many things to talk about and uh, I will try to put questions in the end, but if you see something that is really like relevant for you to ask, please raise your hand anytime, okay? So uh, I'm gonna make a quick introduction on what Mapbox is. So first of all, Map, Mapbox is a mapping company, so we provide all sorts of services for, uh, for maps and uh, we try to niche them in three different uh, sub subsystem, let's say. One is maps themselves, uh, so we provide mapping services for the web and mobile devices. And for that we have uh, not only the QT, uh, QT location plugin, but also Android and iOS specific. Uh, and for the web we do have also uh, the GL engine written in JavaScript for showing on, on websites. In terms of search, we do have geocoding and reverse geocoding, as well as point of interest. So all sorts of information you can query from the REST APIs that we have. And finally, navigation. Uh, we do have an API called Directions API that provides uh, routing and also waypoints in, along the way. And uh, we do provide, for, uh, for currently we do provide navigation for the Android and iOS SDKs as a, like a full set of widgets. Uh, and for Qt, we do provide the navigation through the routing uh, plugin for, Q, for Qt location. And uh, we were in the talks, uh, Paulo did a great uh, presentation on Monday on what will be the next steps for having, uh, let's say, a navigation per se element for the Qt location. So that's gonna be like the next step for us. And then uh, this is a quick overview on what we had before. So until Qt 5.8, we only had the Mapbox Qt location plugin, and uh, it might get some people confused because now there are two, and this one is only raster uh, tiles based. So it's not really the, the GL engine that we are running here. So it's basically uh, fetching uh, raster images from the Mapbox server and, and uh, putting them like side by side. And uh, so, and of course, uh, on the Qt location itself, there was no concept of map rotation or tilting. And, and uh, because this is only raster based, there, there was no vector maps. 3D buildings or runtime styling, which is a feature from the, uh, like from the Mapbox GL style that provides. Uh, so going all the way to Qt 5.9, I don't know, maybe some of you were at the Paulo's presentation uh, that was given uh, downstairs, and he was basically explaining most of the, the changes. But uh, for the Mapbox Qt location plugin, the only thing that really changed it is the ability to have rotation tilting. But uh, this is still like the, the, let's say, the previous plugin that, is, uh, that was not implemented by Mapbox itself. I think it was by Qt company and uh, other open source contributors. And uh, what we are gonna talk today is uh, the concept of vector maps, which is, uh, basically the building block blocks for the, for the GL uh, core engine that we have. So basically the difference, first of all, uh, with raster images, you're basically dealing with uh, textures like images that are like stashed on, by like uh, one inside of it, like by the side of the other. Uh, and they are like tiled. So uh, it's basically a, a, a set of images that are like put it like that. And when you are working with vector data, uh, they are like much more lightweight in a sense, because instead of dealing with raster images, you're dealing already with, could be in the even compressed uh, vector data. So they are more lightweight uh, from what, from uh, let's say a median measurement, they are about 75% uh, lighter than uh, raster images in general. Uh, they support fractional zoom levels because when you deal with raster images, you only deal with integer zoom levels. So when you are like zooming in and out between them, you are basically overscaling or underscaling those raster images. And that provokes like uh, 
uh, pixelated uh, behaviors like the ones that Paulo was explaining just a, a little ago. Uh, they also provide smooth font rendering because if you are rendering everything uh, as vector data, you can uh, every time you render, you, you can calculate the position of fonts. So they work pretty much more or less like the, the font rendering that appears on a regular web, web browser. Also, labels can stay upright. Again, because we calculate everything in runtime. Uh, you can basically tell for labels and symbols in the map that they can always uh, stay like positioned against the, the camera that is, uh, uh, it could be anywhere basically. So they will always uh, look forward in, to the camera side. And that's not a thing you can easily do with raster tiles. And most lastly, the rotation tilting. Uh, so with, together with Mapbox Shell, we introduced the concept of more or less like a camera in, in QT location, so you can point it anywhere in the map and you can tilt and this is basically perfect for navigation. When you have this on a car and you tilt, for example, to 60 degrees, that's the kind of view you want to see when you are navigating. Um, so uh, the Mapbox GL plugin is based on the Mapbox GL itself, which is our open source multi platform OpenGL vector tiles render. That's a big name, but uh, I made it like so because I want to I want to explain step by step what does it all means. It is open source because the, the 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 mapping engine itself is open source. It is available on GitHub, and anyone could fork it if you want. Uh, the vector tile data itself is also open in a sense that this, the the style specification and the vector data specifications are all open. So in theory, uh, if you are like, if you want to be a competitor to Mapbox, we always joke about this. It's pretty easy because everything is there and available for you to do it. But uh, uh, what makes this special is that also we use the same core engine for all sorts of platforms. We provide support. So we use this engine for the Qt location plugin. We use this engine for the Android SDK, the iOS SDK. We use that for node bindings. Uh, we do have also, uh, it was uh, recently released React Native based on this as well. So we do support a wide range of platforms and, and operating systems as well, Windows, Linux, uh, and iOS. And of course, we use OpenGL to render all of this. Once we get the vector data, we, we generate the buckets and, and push them to, like we use shaders, different shaders to, 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 to render everything. And of course, we use uh, vector, vector tile data for that. Not only vector uh, data, because for example, when you deal with sat satellite imagery, you're also dealing with uh, uh, raster images still. So you, you have like this, sometimes you have this hybrid of uh, satellite imagery below and then uh, vector data on top to show the roads and you know any, any sort of map items you wanna show up in there. And see, here below are just an example of the gamma of styles that Mapbox provides. These are like the def default templates that we do provide. But of course, this is all highly customizable. And uh, you, you as a designer or a cartographer, you can just get one of those and continue from there and customize it to your own product. Um, so by the way, uh, this last one here probably is the one that makes more, uh, is more interesting for the automotive sector because uh, we do have a style that provides traffic, real traffic information. I'm gonna talk about this about, uh, a little bit uh, after the slides, but uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing by the way. We released this uh, a, a while ago and uh, the data itself, the traffic data is available in many places already in the world and it's uh, updatable. Uh, I believe so every 30 seconds or uh, on a minute. I'm not really sure, but uh, it, it gets up to date every time. So whenever you need to, to see it on the map, and also this is used for the directions API, when you are doing online routing, uh, it, you will always know that you will get the best possible routing because it will try to avoid traffic in that sense. And. Uh, uh, also, another aspect of the open sourceness of the Mapbox GL uh, uh, mapping engine is that we did a really good effort, and actually, thanks for Paolo from Qt Company for that. He's been like really helpful on this. Uh, 
we managed to get the Mapbox Shell native repository inside of the Qt location uh, repository from Qt. So you can see it for yourself. You can navigate from Qt5, Qt location, source third party, and then you can see the Mapbox Shell native repository there. It's basically a fork of the original repository we have on GitHub, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, we really mean it. So finally, uh, starting to talk about the Mapbox shell of Qt location plugin. This is the new one that came with Qt 5.9, and uh, it's powered by Mapbox shell, the engine uh, I just mentioned. It can also provide real traffic, uh, real-time traffic styles, and also the concept of 3D buildings is also there. Uh, this was also released this year, uh, and, and it's already contained in the in the Qt plugin. And of course, it's uh, it's already embed in, embedded inside the Qt Automotive Suite. This includes Yocto, Boot to Qt, and, and many others. By the way, if you go uh, on the booth for the Qt Automotive Suite, there all all the prototypes that are showing there, they are uh, showing off the Mapbox Shell map rendering engine. And uh, the Remac guys here, they also have an IDI concept that is also showing off uh, Mapbox Shell. It's really cool. You should see it. Uh, it's multi-platform in a sense that it, pro uh, it provides support for almost the entire um, spectrum of what Qt compiles. I think the only exception for now is Windows using Visual Studio, which we don't yet support. But if you use MinkGW, for instance, it, it, it is totally possible. And uh, it provides offline support. And by offline, I mean in both maps and routing. For maps, it's already there. Uh, uh, you can actually even customize uh, from where the, the database is going to be stored. Uh, I believe there is only a limitation that the, with the standard, uh, let's say, standard account from Mapbox, you are you are uh, like cap it up to a certain amount of tiles you can store. But if you want to store more than that uh, threshold, uh, just feel free to contact sales. And uh, also for off offline routing, uh, we have a solution based on OSRM, which is the, the open source routing uh, uh, engine that Mapbox uh, heavily invests on, on, on that. And again, uh, if, you, if you are interested in offline routing, um, and probably this is meant for automotive, please contact sales. Uh, I will put some links uh, by the end of this presentation with more information on that. And by, in the end, uh, we do have some style extensions uh, coming from the Mapbox GL style that are not necessarily part of the Qt location plugin in a sense that the, the, the KML object doesn't really provide uh, properties specifically for that. But the way how we, how we fixed this in a sense was uh, providing them through optional map parameters. Um, by the end of this presentation, I'm, I will try to show up the demo that we have here, and together with it, I'm going to show so, uh, some parts of the code so you can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, and yeah, this is the demo, by the way. Uh, I'm going to show it in real, uh, very time, and, uh, just two or three sl slides from this one. This one, this demo is based on the original automotive su Qt Automotive Suite demo. We just made some slight modifications to adapt that to, to be in uh, landscape mode instead of portrait for, for showing here today. Um, continue talking about navigation. Uh, Mapbox provides, again, like a, a suite of navigation uh, solutions, uh, including the traffic aware routing, turn by turn guidance. This, uh, the, the, the second one is provided via the directions API. And of course, lane instructions and walking, biking, and uh, cycling and driving uh, options. So when you make a query to the directions API, you can specify what kind of uh, routing you need. And uh, by the way, we also will provide a very, uh, it's, it's coming to our, our uh, core technology, the incidents. So you'll be able to see in, in real time whether there is any incidents going along the way of your route. These are just uh, some mock-ups of uh, styles that we, we provide. And you can see the one below here with the real traffic information. So obviously, green goes for, okay, this road is safe, 
and uh, it, there is no traffic in there. Yellow for, okay, there is some sort of traffic, but it's still okay. And red for, okay, this is like congested and uh, uh, you should avoid this road. And uh, lastly, uh, so the Qt location plugin, together with the navigation and the directions API, are just a part of the whole bundle that Mapbox provides via its, uh, the Mapbox Drive product, which also includes some, of, some other things like uh, mobile to car integration. So it is totally possible for you, for instance, you like uh, generate a route that you want on your mobile device, and then you click on a button and you send that automatically to the car. So avoids you like uh, all the waste of time like trying to, to do that on the car itself. And it uh, also includes uh, autonomous integration. Uh, actually this week, I don't know, some, some of you might have seen on the news that uh, there was a Series C funding happening to Mapbox and uh, SoftBank was uh, one of the investors. And uh, they said that one of the things that we want to, to do for the future in Mapbox is to, is to be like even more uh, focused on autonomous driving. And uh, for that, we are gonna create a whole team inside of Mapbox, just to be specialized on that. So I can tell you for sure that this is something that Mapbox heavily invests and is really looking forward in the future to invest. And, and uh, finally, when I speak about others, uh, for example, when you, have a, when you are on a highway and you have like five, five five different lanes and uh, you want to know which lane to take and which lane your car needs to go, this is the kind of information that is available uh, through, through this service. But um, enough talking about uh, the offerings from Mapbox, let's see the code. I have here set up a demo. Uh, so you can see here, uh, this is a, a mock-up, so uh, the driving is really just a simulation. We actually have a tool for doing that, so if you want to do it yourself, uh, let's talk. And uh, this is Mapbox GL running inside of Qt, and uh, you can see here, this, all this information is coming through, uh, through the web. Of course, you can always come back to navigation whenever you want. You can change from night to day mode and the transition is very smooth. Uh, this is also a feature coming from our GL uh, native core engine. And also you can enable or disable traffic in, in runtime. This is all customizable. And by the way, you see the 3D extrusions here. They are also part of this release. So if you take the, the most recent QT release, which I think is QT 592, this is all there available for you to see. And uh, yeah, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, there is also navigation instructions here. They are also coming from the directions API that we use. And this is all wrapped up in the QGIL route, QML object. Uh, Mapbox provides a service for Qt location on that. And uh, I'm gonna show now a little bit of the code uh, for you to see how it's basically implemented. Uh, are we good on time still? Yeah? Okay, so uh, let me just close this real quick and let's see the code. Uh, I'm, I'll try to be as fast as possible. Let me open up a bit. Yes? So let's start with the, the Mapbox plugin itself. As you can see here, you can specify a set of parameters that are optional to every uh, uh, map plugin from, from, from the Qt location. But for example, we have cool stuff here. Uh, I hope, okay, what's going on? I don't know, but maybe it's a bad contact here. All right, sure. Uh, so uh, one of them that is, looks really interesting is that um, the, the map object itself, the KML map object, uh, we use a frame buffer uh, for that because you, you can like uh, uh, transform the, map, uh, the KML map object itself. But if you don't need that, uh, you can avoid a few texture copies by saying that you don't want to use the, the extra frame buffer object. So this uh, can... Uh, save you a few frame, uh, 
uh, rendering per, per second. It, it is eventually faster. Uh, access token, of course, uh, you need one access token for accessing the Mapbox services. You can get one for free if you want to like try it out or up to a limit of users. But then uh, if we're talking like big, then uh, you need to, to, to check one of the offerings that Mapbox provides. Um, and by the way, uh, so, so as part of the Mapbox Shell plugin, there are some default styles that you can choose from. But uh, let's say that you have uh, your own style that you want to use, uh, and you can specify that via these uh, parameters. It's called additional style URLs, and you just uh, like put them uh, and separate with a comma. Um, let's see what what else. Oh, oh yes, here. So uh, the traffic layers there. Are, um, I don't know, does any of you have already uh, worked with Mapbox GL styles before? Okay, cool. So th there is a concept in the, the Mapbox GL style of sources. Uh, that's basically where the data uh, comes from and layers, which is basically uh, uh, we, we get this data and we customize it with, via the style and show up on, this, on, on the map. And for example, for traffic, we enable this via this uh, many different traffic information that comes from the style. And uh, we have a property on them, it's called visibility. And that's how I made, uh, whenever you click on the button, you enable or disable the traffic. You basically tell them to be visible or not. Uh, what else, let's see. About the 3D extrusions, uh, yeah, here. So uh, with three map parameters, you can enable the 3D extrusions. The first map parameter is basically adding a 3D buildings layer. The second one is basically saying to the source, uh, the composite source, uh, to only acquire data that comes from features that have this uh, extrude uh, property set to true. This is, uh, by the way, this is, uh, this filtering mechanism is also very specif uh, highly specified in the documentation we have. Uh, and lastly, there are some paint properties for that layer that we uh, like express here, like extrusion color, opacity, where the height comes from, and where is the base, so where the extrusion starts, and which height it starts. Um, Oh, uh, yes, uh, there, there's one more important thing. Uh, how do we acquire the route and how do we update the map on that? Let me just quickly go back here to the demo. There is a cool thing I want to show is, uh, for example, you can grab this uh, starting point here and put anywhere else in the map. And this generates a query to the directions API that will update the route and send this data back to the KML object. So the way how we do this uh, is whenever, for example, we, we release the mouse area here, we call for this function, update route. And the update route, what it does is uh, tells the route query to clear the waypoints and then add them again using the start marker and the end marker uh, geolocation coordinates. And this generates a query that, that again, uh, gives you the, the routing itself and waypoints. And this is uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you. Actually, one question. Yes, sorry. One more one. Okay, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.